Okay, so here's this wireless control system that I installed for the well. We're in this tiny little uh, cement well house here. Here's our power coming in. We have uh, 220 and 110, just two breakers. Um, the 110 previously just ran to this one plug right here to run power tools or whatever off of. And, uh, and then the 220 came over here to this control box that then runs down into uh, the well. That control box houses the uh, starter, re or, um, starter capacitors and a thermal overload switch and things like that. So what I've done is I've opened this box up and I've taken the two hots in the ground that used to come straight through here and I've ran them up into this control box, into the relay up here, and then back down and out into here. And uh, we'll open this up and show you what's going on inside here. So in here we have the main relay, this is the big uh, 220 relay that runs the the pump, the well motor. And then we have up here an RF Solutions uh, wireless control box. That um, is originally designed for trap shooting to launch clay pigeons out in the field. It's good for, for about two kilometers um, and we are just about exactly a quarter mile from here to the house that we're controlling. So well within its range, um, although it is cut down a little bit because we're inside of a cement room. But anyway, that runs off of 24 volt DC. Here we have a, um, a DC power supply. So this is fed by 110 volt that comes in uh, from that main line. That's kind of sketchy, but it comes in right here to the side. And so then it comes in and feeds this, and it also tees off, and then continues clear through, and then goes back up to uh, that plug, so that it always has hot power. Uh, the DC powers this, and then this inside the wireless control box has four relays. I only have three of them activated right now. Uh, one of them comes down at 120 volts, and it runs the... the um, control, what do you call it, the coil, the coil uh, that runs the relay, 110 volts, 120, and then we have another 110 that's switched, and it comes over and goes into this plug that I have right here on the side. So there's a switched plug here that's good for up to 10 amps, um, so we can plug in a signal light or some other device that indicates that the well system is on. Um, and then we have another one that I have hooked up to the power supply that runs into there at 24 volt DC, and that runs out on this black cable right here. And then I have that going out to a strobe light, an orange strobe light outside that also acts as an indicator light. So that's DC. Um, and it works in the evenings, in the mornings, but during the day, it's not quite visible. Um, so that's most of it. And uh, we have here, um, as a, as a uh, afterthought, if the system for some reason doesn't work, I needed to install a, a bypass. So if the receiver or something ran out of batteries and they couldn't get the well started, they can come down here and flip this switch. And that's a, a bypass for the control system. And that basically just comes in with the main power and then jumps from this side of the relay uh, up to the switch and then goes back over to this side of the relay. So it just manually bridges across this relay and then starts the pump. So I think that's all the features that we got there. It's enclosed in this nice metal box, hopefully to keep the rodents out. Um, yeah. Yeah, i will show you the house from here. So uh, step outside this little shed and right over there is the house that's a quarter mile away it's getting a new roof on right now and then this is the, the little cement building that the uh, control systems housed in right up here is the uh, 24 volt DC flashing strobe light when the pump is on 
and we still got to do some stuff to waterproof those connections a little bit that's not quite finished up yet so there we have it that's total cost for the project not including labor is about two hundred and fifty dollars so not not too bad so alrighty